Yulit, who is going to tell us about uh, her experience work uh, at the data fund with clinicians. So yes, everybody, welcome. Woo! Sorry, uh, my new Mac is hanging. Okay, so what is a data thon all about? So uh, it's like a hackathon, but with data analytics, right? And um, this NUS MIT data thon of uh, 2017 brings together the physicians, the nurses, the data scientists, the data engineers, the software engineers, and students who are passionate about healthcare analytics, right? Who are open to collaborate with like-minded people and from different disciplines and who are energetic and fun, basically, right? And basically at the start of the event, um, two sets of database were offered, from one from the Philips EICU Collaborative uh, Research Database, and the other is the Mimic Medical Information Map for Intensive Care. So both these databases are intensive care data from the patients in intensive care. So uh, NUHS data, however, turned out to be very different because they didn't have time to prepare it. And um, it uh, turned out to be patient history rather than uh, ICU data. So um, 80 participants were selected to attend this data thon, including the judges and organizers. And we number close to about 100 people at the data thon, right? And um, basically on Friday, start of the data thon, uh, we had the team forming with 11 topics. And um, each clinician gave like three minute speech um, for their topic and the question. Sorry, the slides are too fast. Um, and then we made use of the dinner time to do team forming. And after that, we were given access to the different tools of the data thon, including connecting to VM. And for each and uh, every team has a, a VM, each user of every team has a VM, and how to access a database to get to the data. So this data is placed on a, a SQL database on the VM. We all uh, access to it through uh, this VM. And we have a step channel for each group and of course the Google Drive folder for each group. So I formed with the team Sepsis. Okay, um, and in our team, there are two researchers from China who flew down uh, from China uh, just for the data thon. And two NUHS researchers who serve as student leads and two ICU doctors. And uh, one lady from NUHS Informatics and uh, one BA who has some SQL background and one recent graduate from the Masters of Technology program that uh, I have yet to complete. <laughs> and it was a diverse set of people, right? So out of this group of people, there's clinicians, um, doctors, and so on. And basically, our first problem is that we were quite unsure of our goal. Our first hypothesis you know, uh, changed again and again over the 48 hours. So we started off with wanting to find out the predictors of mortality among the sepsis patients. And there are various uh, methods to predict uh, ICU mortality. So one of uh, which is the Apache scores. And what it means is that it gives the likelihood of how a patient, uh, likelihood of a patient who will die in ICU. So um, sepsis patients basically have a higher mortality than uh, normal. So uh, basically, on average, children who end up in ICU have about 2 to 4% of mortality rate. But if a child has sepsis, um, the ratio <coughs> goes up to 45%. So that's the same ratio as uh, same mortality rate as uh, flipping a coin, basically. So there are various methods to predict ICU. Uh, sorry, I've been through this. First challenge is to, be, to find a subset of patients who, has, uh, who were admitted into uh, ICU with uh, sepsis, basically. So they, there's um, diagnosis codes associated with all these uh, patients, but we later found that this is actually very inaccurate. So there's a lot of uh, codes that can describe a sepsis, uh, a infectious, basically, infection. And another possible option is to actually rely on text mining of the keywords from the initial diagnosis. And these diagnoses are description provided by the physicians in the ICU. Okay? So we also encountered a problem where basically need to take into account that there's actually multiple um, diagnoses um, throughout a patient's hospital stay. And then we decided to basically just use the diagnosis within the first 24 hours of the admission. And basically, for example, if a, a patient's initial diagnosis may not contain any infection keywords in there, but four hours later, a second diagnosis was included in, uh, for example, like a respiratory uh, infection, that will make, uh, means that the patient will fall under the category of sepsis on admission. So basically, we spent the whole of Saturday just extracting the data from EICU. And over 250,000 patients, um, they have multiple admission records and they have multiple uh, diagnosis records over the length of their stay. So to give an idea of the, the data, it's like right, 250,000 patients right, with 57 megabytes of data of that patient. One of the table, which is a lab table, is 4 gigs big. 
in CSV form format. And this means that it's 70 times as big as the number of patients. So the amount of information is just enormous, and the relationship sometimes is just not obvious at all. So we found at the end of Saturday that the lab test performed is in varying number of lab records with the same timestamp. Basically, you have a lab done, so you have multiple labs, and it's all in the same table, and it's all with a different lab code. And we have to find all this uh, information and try to get the correlation of it. Of course, um, we didn't have time. So by the end of um, Sunday morning, so our hypothesis has shifted from predicting of uh, finding the predictors of mortality of sepsis patient to mortality rate of the sepsis patient in teaching hospitals versus non-teaching hospitals. So that shows how disorganized we were. Okay, don't no worry, almost done. <laughs> um, so after the data extraction on Sunday, so like hours before the cutoff time, like we struggled to do data transformation, to gain some information, to put into our presentation and everything. And we pretty much didn't get any, uh, much done during the couple hours. If you guys have been to hackathons, you understand how it's like. So yeah, but fun, the thing, uh, interesting thing about this whole hackathon is that basically over the course of hackathon, this is one hackathon where I learned the most, I would say. And I've been to like eight or nine hackathons so far. And it's like, yeah, one of the things we think uh, we learn from mistakes and the things that better than learning from our mistakes is the team dynamics from this hackathon. It's like all these people from all the different backgrounds and we struggle, basically struggle to um, explain to these health professionals how a data mining is about. And the health professionals are struggling to explain to us why is it important to have a predictor of mortality. So yeah, there's a lot of um, barriers going on, but we still managed to, and you can see everybody was passionate to get it to work, you know. So, and that really helps a lot to uh, make the effort to do that. And yeah, thank you. And um, if you are interested, so one thing is that this data town, uh, uh, one thing about this team I find great is that they really persevered and they want to carry this forward over the data thon period, uh, finished ready, but they still want to work on it. So this is our GitHub. Uh, if you want to see what else we have done, you can basically check. And it's nothing much in there right now because we all have to. Um, take this course, uh, about nine modules course, to be able to access the data because uh, this is um, in terms of the patient's uh, data in US and they are quite big on privacy, so we have to take a nine module course before we can access the data. So that will take a bit of time, but after that, I'm sure we'll have something more included in that GitHub. Cool. Thank you. You actually understand everything I say, okay? <laughs> uh, question about hackathons. Um, do you do you uh, do you think that do you feel like learning in a hackathon is different from learning outside a hackathon? And so how? Yes, so for sure. So. One thing about in a hackathon is that you really, really have to keep an open mind. And the best thing I like about hackathon is you really meet people outside of your own comfort zone. Basically, you really have to keep an open mind. There's a lot of things you can learn as long as you keep an open mind. If you, um, you, there's a lot of people who like to go inside a hackathon and basically think, oh, I'm bringing you my skill, you know, you need to listen to me. Well, that's straight away you're not going to learn anything. So, yeah. Um, the th things you learn is it's just uh, what you learn yourself is basically from your own comfort zone. But when you go into a hackathon uh, with an open mind, you're learning from people basically who are very different from yourself. And they have a different way of looking at things, some things sometimes. And that's really teach me a lot to basically switch tracks sometimes, become more, I don't know, different <laughs> than I usually would. Yeah, I have a question. So what are some of the things that clinicians uh, think are important uh, and that, you know, it's not immediately obvious, like from the data, because you mentioned that, you know, they had they, they had explained you know, why certain things are more important. Yeah. So, like, um, usually if I go uh, into a date, like, this is, this data is actually very uh, comprehensive data. It has everything. Um, um, basically, for usually I look at data, I just say, okay, this is the, the, target I want to predict, right? So that's it, I just fix the target, I pass in all the variables and that's it. No, the data is like basically for one patient, you have thousands of records of lab tests that you have to basically transform and basically understand that you are supposed to get the closest possible lab test to the admission and not the average of the entire stay. That was my first mistake, is that I just take the patient's entire lab data 
and basically for like say get their temperature, uh, body temperature, right? I just get the average, I get the mean, I get the max, the minimum. And I said, nope, that's all not, info not important information. All I want is the first recorded temperature of that patient. Anybody have any questions? I feel like a lot of like, hackathoners here. <laughs> is there anything else that you want to share? <laughs> yeah, right. So interesting thing about this NUS-MIT data is that they really, really uh, prepared the data and everything for us. Well, the NUS, uh, NUHS data, okay, like, that one is not very uh, prepared because they, they were not prepared for on how they need to prepare the data and set it aside for us. So um, there's uh, access uh, rights limitations as well. But in terms of the EICU, the Philips EICU data and the MIMIC data is actually quite uh, comprehensive. And if you want to access the data, you can. All you need to do is just go to the, the uh, websites and just go through a nine module course. <laughs> and yeah, you get access. But how answer. Long does each module take? It's really quick. There's only like five MCQs per module. <laughs> they have like a huge, comprehensive uh, history background per module, but it's only five MCQ and you can retake the MCQ as many times as you want. <laughs> Which is 45 MCQs, technically. Yeah, <laughs> there are lots. Okay. Yeah. That's okay cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you.